Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the art of getting women to chase. Well, I've got a really good email. This guy took some time. He wrote out, I think it was like five different little scenarios, what ifs about what if this happens, what if that happens, how would you approach this situation. So he came up with basically five hypothetical situations. So I thought it was a good email to answer. So I'm going to go through that and I wrote a quote on this topic and I'm going to go through and analyze each particular situation. So the quote says, when it comes to dating, scarcity creates value. Being mysterious, unpredictable and challenging to figure out causes women to become more interested in you, curious about you, value you more, respect you more, chase you more and generally like you more especially when you first start dating. This helps form a strong emotional bond that is essential to making a relationship possible. Most men are in such a rush to lock women down to a commitment that they literally chase women away by doing too much too soon. When it comes to dating and creating a lasting relationship, less really is more when you take slow, methodical, measured steps. You can't rush or force a woman to fall in love any more and you can rush or force a rose to bloom before it is ready. So let's go through his email. He says, Hi Corey, I've recently come across your work and I've been blown away by how well you understand women and relationships and articulate your wisdom. Your work is truly a much needed gift to the world. I've been wondering about five lesser covered, relatively common edge cases. It seemed contrived to space out five separate emails, so I apologize in advance for doubling the maximum length. How would you apply your principles to the following situations? Number one, well, first and foremost, you need to read the book 10 to 15 times. You sound like a guy who's just cherry picking information from the videos and trying to shortcut the success and avoid reading the book. If you're, if you're doing that, you're going to avoid getting consistent success. And if you're happy with getting mediocre and inconsistent success, then by all means, just watch videos and try to cherry pick stuff here and there. So number one, he says, one of your videos, I can't remember which one, surprised me. You indicated the sole purpose of one date per week is to get a girl to the point of pursuing you, at which point she's clearly not rejecting you. Measured steps are only meant to avoid over-pursuing while initiating contact so once a girl starts asking you out while still on a date, you should agree and set up a next date in the spot. Timetables be damned. The idea is like I talk about my book and you're obviously not familiar with the book. I can tell you haven't read it just by that first half of the paragraph there. But like I talk about in the book is that the guy initially when he meets a woman is going to set one date per week. Usually by the second or third date or the second or third week, the woman feels safe and comfortable enough to re- start reaching out, to send simple texts like, hey, I was thinking about you, saw a movie, reminded me about you, that kind of shit. And when that starts to happen, then you make the next date. And the, lo- the more frequently that happens over the, you know, you get five, six, seven weeks down the road, what you'll notice, as long as you're treating them properly on the dates, is that the frequency of her contact will actually increase. And when what, what she sees after several weeks or even a month or so or dating you is that she starts to realize that when she reaches out, you're happy to hear from her and then you make the next date. And then they start to realize that's how it goes. And the idea is it's her idea. She reached out to you. So that's why you don't really have – because some women are going to perceive you in their eyes as being an 8 out of 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 right off the bat. Most women are not going to be that high. The average woman is going to be five, six, maybe seven as far as her attraction level to you when you first meet. So the higher her attraction level starts out, the sooner she's going to do these things and the easier it's going to be. In other words, attraction level, interest level, it cuts through everything. The higher it is, the more they're going to do and the quicker they're going to do it. The lower it is, the longer it's going to take for them to get to that point. So the idea is that if you as the man are only going to call her once per week and set one date, then if you go out on a date like say on a Tuesday and she contacts you on a Wednesday and then you set the next date for say maybe over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday or something like that, 
then you might, you'll end up seeing her twice in that week because she reached out to you. Now here's the flip side of that. The idea is that once the woman starts reaching out to you on a consistent basis, then it's pretty much hands off for you as far as pursuing goes. You don't have to pursue anymore. And what happens is she'll do all of it. And when I say pursuing, I'm talking about initiating contact. In other words, you don't have a date set, you haven't talked to her, and then she reaches out to you. And then once that starts to happen, there's it actually becomes counterproductive for you to continue reaching out to her unless, of course, a couple months down the road, she's like, how come you never call me, you never text me, you never this, you never that? Then in that case, if the woman's asked for it, then you'll surprise her no more usually than once per week with a simple text or an email or a Facebook message or maybe a little post-it note on her car mirror or something like that that just says, hey, want to let you know I was thinking about you, have a great day or had a really great time over this weekend, can't wait to see you again, something along those lines and that's enough to just really one time is all it really takes. When, and you're only going to do that though if she's asked for it. Most women I found in my own life, they don't ask for that because they're calling and texting you all the time and you're getting together all the time once you're in a relationship. They're used to that and they're fine with that. And the reason being is feminine energy is all about opening up to receive love, bonding, connecting, relationships. And remember, women tend to say about 8,000 words in a day and guys tend to say on average about 2,000 words. So women naturally are talkers. They're bonders. They want to connect more. And you can facilitate that by taking the measured steps. He says, however, if a girl actively pursues from day one and spontaneously asks to hang out almost every day, well, if you meet a girl and you go out on one date and then she's calling you every single day and wanting to see you, there's a really high likelihood that that girl is incredibly insecure and needy. I mean, think about it. You meet a girl and she literally wants to see you every day from the first day you meet. Maybe she, maybe it's love at first sight for her, but that's excessive. Women who have a lot of confidence, really beautiful, really successful, are not going to be like that right away. Only insecure women will blow up your phone like that. And you'll actually get turned off when women do those things. But obviously, it sounds like you've probably never experienced that before. And that's, again, that's why you want to date. That's why you want to experience lots of different women when you're learning the stuff that's in my book so you can see the patterns. Because as your confidence level grows, women that blow up your phone from the moment you meet, they're going to turn you off after a few weeks. He says, if you almost always agree, it becomes apparent that A, you don't have much else going on socially right now or B, you've made yourself available to her to be a priority over scheduling other things. Well, if you're making dates every single day, every single night, you obviously don't have much going on in your life. And so then my question to you is, what's your purpose? What's your mission in life? Don't you have anything going on? Or are you just sitting around retired or not working or unemployed waiting for the phone to ring and somebody to go do something with? Guys who are busy, I mean, I, I couldn't deal with that. A woman blowing up my phone right after I, I meet her and wanting to see me every day, I'm, I'm not going to want to do that. I can't fit that into my schedule. I'm too fucking busy. I got too many things that are going on. Now, as the weeks and the months go by and you get to the point where you start dating, you spend a lot of time together, eventually maybe you move in together and you're living together right away. That I mean, that's a different situation. Those things happen slowly over time. So, in this particular scenario here, I mean, literally, girl's blowing up your phone. She's either it's love at first sight for her, and more than likely, she's really needy. And after a few weeks of that, you're going to get turned off and not want to be around her that much. But until you've dated enough women like that, you're not going to know that, especially if you're a guy that's basically been suffering from a pussy embargo most of his life. And then all of a sudden, you're getting all this attention from women. You're like, oh my God, it can be overwhelming. It's like you don't know what you don't know. That's what take your time. Don't be in a fucking rush to settle down with the first girl that comes along. Make her earn you as well because people can hide who they are for the first 90 days of a relationship. He says, isn't that risky? If you start hanging out every single day like that, I'd say you, you don't have a purpose or a mission in life, dude. And you need to get some fucking hobbies. What about going to the gym? What about taking care of yourself? What about your friends? What about your family? I mean, what about your work? You shouldn't be dropping what you're doing to answer the phone. You should have more going on in your life. In my case, a girl seemed to binge on me until she couldn't take me anymore and her interest suddenly plummeted to a five at best as an ex simultaneously reentered the picture. 
there's nothing you can do about that. She, because you got to understand, and, I, and again, I talk about this in the book, which you obviously haven't read yet, so you're pretty much clueless. But the bottom line is that, and that kind of, and I had some situations like that that I wrote about in my book. Women start out real hot and heavy, things are going well, and all of a sudden they just disappear on you. And if you've been doing everything right and they disappear, it's usually because some other guy, an ex of theirs, came back in the picture and she has a stronger emotional bond with that guy than you. If, if you've been seeing each other every day for two or three weeks and all of a sudden she disappears now she's back with the ex, there's not a lot you can do in that situation. That's why you just let it go. You leave the door open. Hey, give me a call if it doesn't work out. But you shouldn't be – if she's calling you every day, there's no – you shouldn't be calling her at all or pursuing her at all. I made additional mistakes before and after that. So there's the real reason. So you weren't following because you don't know what the book teaches and you tended to over pursue and there was an X in the picture. So I mean that's that's why you got ditched. Again, this is why you read the book 10 to 15 times so these little things don't happen. But this is what happens when you try to cherry pick information which is obviously what you're doing. He said, but would you totally rule out excessive avail- availability as a factor? It's not so much excessive availability but it's obviously you're chasing her and blowing up her phone as well because you didn't know the fundamentals in the book. So in, in that particular case, again, I explained it in pretty detail and the book makes it clear why a situation like that would happen. So number two, if a girl is withdrawn indefinitely, clearly needs space and are tried to just be friends, that only happens when you pursue too much. You're never going to hear let's just be friends with a girl who's pursuing you. Women don't dump guys that they're chasing. That's reality. And if you're hearing things like she's with when a woman's withdrawing or she says she's confused or she brings up just being friends, that means you're pursuing too much. And I don't care what else is going on. By my, you don't hear those things unless you're pursuing too much. How would you handle mutual friends who invite you both to hang out? Bring another date. Talk to the other women. I mean be friendly. Wave to her when you see her but then go about your business. Or if you got something better going on, go hang out with somebody else. Would you tailor your response based on which of you is closer to these mutual friends or how much you value them versus your stance on the girl? No. Again, have other things going on in your life. I can tell already you're like obsessed with this particular woman that you're talking about. She's in your social circle and she's around you and you're rationalizing why it's okay to spend more and more time when you've already turned her off by pursuing too much. Accepting these invitations could be perceived as chasing and in any case, the contact would only drive her further away when she needs space or give the wrong impression, just friends. Again, that's why you should have other women in your life. It's going to be really hard to do the right things when this is the only girl that you got that you want to date or that you are dating. He says, always being unable to make it could damage your friendships, make you feel like a lousy friend and be perceived as cowardly and disingenuous. Well, you should be doing things with your friends other than having this woman around. Again, your mind is, I can tell you're stuck in a rationalization of looking for ways to chase this girl and you are chasing her. That's why you got in friend zoned. That's why she lost interest and on top of that, there's an ex in the picture. And therefore, there's no scarcity on your part. You're too easy, too available, and too overly eager to be with her. You're treating her like a celebrity. Unless they ask directly, openly telling your friends you're keeping your distance could make them feel awkward if they were ignoring the elephant in the room for their own inner peace. Again, you shouldn't be involving your other friends in what's going on in your dating. And more than likely, you're talking to your friends and you're telling them about her and what she's doing or not doing. What do you think? Is she still interested? Is that X in the picture? What's really going on? And all that shit's going to get back to her because then your friends are going to go talk to her and she's going to realize that they're fishing around for you. You're completely coming from a weak beta male place here. It also runs the risk of someone repeating everything you say to the girl, perhaps reworded in a helpful but damaging way. Yeah, exactly. What did I just say? No group dates unless she's your girlfriend. And I don't care if if it's somebody that you have mutual friends with. The two of you need to spend time together so you can form a strong emotional bond. Stop involving your friends and trying to get them to help you in your personal life. That makes you look like a pussy. 
It's the reality of it. It's going to turn her off. Number three, if a girl withdraws and later contacts you by text, phone, or email or in person, it opens up a two-way dialogue in which you can say via the same medium, hey, it's great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? Correct. Facebook likes, etc. do not count as contact. Absolutely. If it's a girl that blew you off and she starts liking your Facebook posts again, I've done several videos on this over the years. That's what they do. They start liking things and then they may comment. But unless they're addressing you directly, you're just going to ignore those. Because especially if it's a woman that's reached out to you, she has your number, you spent time with her, you've hooked up with her, whatever. She really wants to talk to you. She will contact you directly. But that's kind of the thing they do. It's like in the periphery. It's like sticking their toe in the water. And then once they see that nothing happens, creates more attraction, then they make even more of an effort. Then they're a little more bolder with a Facebook message or an email or texting you or calling you directly. However, how would you handle it if she wrote you a letter? What if it's unclear what will be in the unopened letter? It could be a can we start over letter, easy return contact via any means, but it could be let's be just be friends closure letter. If a woman sends you a snail mail letter and says, hey, let's just be friends, I'm not going to do anything with that. I mean that's not going to happen to me at this point in my life. But when I was younger, those kind – I mean I don't think I ever had a woman send me a let's just be friends letter. But the bottom line is if you get something like that, you don't do anything with it. You just throw it in the trash and move on with your life because then she's going, did he get it? Did he get my letter? Then she's going to be asking your friends, you think he got my letter? And if your friends go, hey, she said she sent you a letter. It's like, yeah, I got it. Well, it's like she said she wanted to be friends. I'm not interested in that. So let's talk about something else. Hey, how about them Yankees? Not knowing which it was, I'd be inclined to return the unopened letter with a note saying gently, sympathetically, I can wait to hear what she has to say until she's ready to tell me in person. I wouldn't do that. That's stupid. If you would open and read it and it's let's just be friends, how would you make – your strictly romantic or sexual intentions clear before walking away. I wouldn't. Think about it. That's like somebody – say you got a house that's worth $100,000 and somebody comes and says, hey, I'll give you fifty grand cash for that. Uh, and when I was in real estate, we don't even respond to those. And the, uh, the realtor called, hey, what about our offer? It's like the, owner, the seller's not even going to respond to that. It's, it's just – it's not realistic. Guy's got an $80,000 mortgage. He can't sell it for fifty. It's just you know you're wasting our time with that and that's why we're not going to respond to it. So sending you a snail mail letter talking about being friends only, it's a waste of your fucking time and therefore it gets none of your attention. It doesn't warrant your time and it has no value to offer you. Again, focus on your outcome. What do you want? You want somebody to date and have a relationship with. She's offering you friendship. Throw a letter in your fireplace and burn it up. Let it keep you warm for a minute or two <laughs> if it's winter time. Reaching back out, reaching back out via text and phone just to talk in person reeks, reeks of chasing – but writing a better la- – I wouldn't write anything back. Again, I would just ignore it. Number four, if a girl has a reason to feel safe with you, you write in your book to essentially insist on picking her up at home. Well, OK. So you have read the book but you definitely don't know well enough. Picking her up at home for a date instead of meeting her out and show relent if she really likes you. He says, however, you also brought up special circumstances – under which a woman's crazy ex had been coming around, so you agreed to meet out. It really depends, and I, I talk about this in the book. It depends on how well you know her. I mean, think about it. If you don't know the girl well at all, do you really want to be going to her house and picking her up and then taking her home? Because what if you go and you pick her up and the conversation sucks, or she's boring, or you're not having much fun with her, or she just turns out to be an obnoxious asshole? Then you gotta you got to deal with leading her to your car and you got to put up with taking her all the way home so if you're not a, if it's somebody that you don't know real well meet him out for a drink or two and then that way you can say hey well you know it was great chatting with you i'm gonna run i'll talk to you later and then you can leave but if you're absolutely certain this is somebody you want to date and you feel comfortable with her then yeah by all means go drive and pick her up you also got to think about it from your perspective this person needs to be on probation as well they're, just because they're pretty and they have a nice ass doesn't mean they're, they're, they're automatically qualified to be your future wife or girlfriend. You don't know what you don't know yet. And remember, people can hide who they are for the first 90 days of a relationship. What if you're dating a prideful girl who is terribly embarrassed that she lives with her parents? I mostly crushed the shocking gauntlet of tests this girl threw at me on the first date, the likes of which I've never seen 
but she seemed to feel very strongly about this issue when making plans for our second date later to the point that it felt like less like a test and more of a legitimate deal breaker. I've never had a problem going to a woman's house to pick her up when she lived with her parents. I mean it happens. A lot of women do that. Women that are maybe 35, 40 years old will move back into their parents after, the, after a divorce or when they're separated. It happens. So you may, you know, even though you may be older, you're going to encounter that sometimes. And so if the girl doesn't want you coming to her house, what does that tell you about her attraction? If you went and picked her up the first time but now she doesn't want you going there again, why go out with somebody like that again? You want somebody that's enthusiastically wants you, not somebody that's sitting on the fence. You want somebody that would jump fences to be with you. I took a risk and agreed to meet her out, leaving all date locations a surprise, indicating I'd rather spare myself from the parental awkwardness anyway, which was true. Well, every set of parents I've ever met, they all fucking love me, so I don't have awkward situations with parents. And if you're good at asking questions and you good at creating rapport like I talk about in my book, the parents are going to like you as well. She proceeded to significantly test me only once the entire second date at the beginning and she started to pursue me since. Did I handle things wisely or simply recover later from a mistake? Well, think about it this way. Well, you obviously know that you're not going to go over and fuck her at her parents' house unless maybe her parents were out of town. So think about it. Think about the logistics of sex. Your job as a man is to create an opportunity for sex to happen, hang out, have fun, and hook up. So if she's going to meet you out, then great. It can be someplace that's relatively close to where you live. So when you're hanging out and you're making out and you're all over each other, you can go, hey, let's get out or and go back to my place and have a bottle of wine or let's have a glass of champagne. Just like I talk about in the book. Why, why go through extra effort when it's not necessary? Number five, it's easy enough to be the leader, choose where to eat, and to hold fast against objections when there are many choices in the menu. What if you're at the grocery store picking out a single meat to eat together? If you generally love to eat almost everything, how do you tell apart a truly picky eater from a girl who objects repeatedly and eventually makes her own suggestion? You don't have to eat the same fucking thing. If you like steak and she likes chicken or fish, or she's a vegetarian and is only going to eat tofu, then get her the fucking steak that you want and get her some fucking tofu and you can grill some tofu if you want. It doesn't mean you have to eat the same thing, dude. You're overthinking th- things. How and where do you stand your ground? You eat what you want. You don't have to eat the same thing as her. You don't have to submit to her. If she doesn't want to eat the same thing, that's fine. I mean, you're not going to sit there having dinner at a restaurant and you get pissed off the girl if... If you're ordering a steak and she wants fish. This is one area, hopefully the only area, where I'm still a total pushover. Again, that's that's really an irrelevant thing. Because what you eat, you should be eating things because that's what you want to fucking eat. Remember what Steve McQueen said. I live for myself and I answer to no me. It doesn't mean you're a selfish jackass. It just means you're going to make yourself happy. And you're not going to sit there and eat fish when you fucking hate fish because it's the only thing in the menu that she wants to eat. Get her what she wants and then get something separate from from yourself because it's going to come off as unattractive if you're eating fish to please her when you really don't like fish. I mean think about it. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype or email coaching session with yours truly. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.